Hey there, my name is Shay and I'm the content development lead for Vectors and Illustrations on the design elements team at Adobe Stock. Having previously worked on the Photoshop, Illustrator and InDesign collections, I'm also currently studying at Parsons New School and have previously worked in UX, UI and identity design. Hey chat, I'm Teresa and I'm the senior production artist for motion graphics templates at Adobe Stock. Some of the most favorite things I get to do is educating artists how to make engaging user-friendly motion graphics templates. I also get to collaborate with the DVA teams to help make After Effects, Premiere Pro, and Premiere Rush the very best experiences they could be for both creators and users. So today we're going to show you a creative workflow using Adobe Stock assets. Adobe Stock has millions of amazing creative assets and not just photos and videos. We have illustrations, vectors, templates, 3D, and of course, motion graphics templates. We're going to walk you through how to find Adobe Stock in Creative Cloud apps and on the site where there's a ton of really inspiring work and also really great search features. If you have any questions, make sure you pop in the chat. Someone from the Mod Squad or Teresa or myself will make sure to chime in and answer. And let's get started in Illustrator. Hop into my screen here. And you can see I'm working in um, Adobe Illustrator that you can easily update from the Creative Cloud desktop app. I'm gonna go ahead and click Create New to start a new file. I'm gonna show you these categories up at the top here that have tons of free Adobe Stock templates that you can get started with. There's print designs, there's film and video overlays, even art and illustration kits for patterns. Since we're doing a virtual event for a hypothetical client called the Cozy Calico Cafe, we're going to be working with a social media set and that way I'll be able to share everything with my remote coworker all the way on the other side of Brooklyn. So when you click into the mobile category, again, there's a ton of these free templates here. You can click into the detail view and I really like what's going on here. This is a really nice looking design. It's not quite what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the bottom here that says find more templates on Adobe stock. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna search for fall social media. And when I click go here, it'll take me to the Adobe stock site. And since I'm coming from Illustrator, it's going to pre-filter by the app that I'm coming from. But since we have free templates available in all of these Creative Cloud apps, you can feel free and explore more there. So I'm gonna scroll through some of these, give you a feel of, of what we've got here. And I like the look of this one. I've worked with it before. And you can, again, click into this detail view to get a better idea of what you're working with. Awesome. And I'm gonna save that to my library. And you can also open it in app, but when I save it to my library, it's with all the other assets that I wanna work with that I can find on Adobe Stock, across uh, Adobe Capture, all of Creative Cloud. So when I go back into Illustrator and I go to saved, I'll be able to open it here. And here we are. Right off the bat, I'm just gonna delete this extra design because we're working with Teresa to develop the other assets. So I'm gonna just work on an announcement post for our client. I'm gonna get rid of some of this extra text here so we can show you how to add a background image from Adobe Stock. And the greatest thing about Adobe Stock templates is that they all use Adobe fonts. So there's no more packaging or licensing concerns with the fonts that you're using for your design, everything that you're using, anyone else on Creative Cloud will also have access to. So if I go ahead and open up the character panel and click this drop down, I can filter by the Adobe fonts that I have activated. And if I wanna look for more, you can always uh, click the find more button at the top there. But I happen to know that this client is using a lot of Azure Bat. So I'm gonna go ahead with that and this will update there and you can get really granular with these type controls, especially if you've already had these on your computer. Great, there's some really great updates in Illustrator this year, giving you really specific glyph control. Awesome. And so we've already, get it, we've already got started on this design that we need basically as quick as possible for this client, right? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to libraries, which you can do by opening windows and clicking libraries. I also happen to have it here. And that same library that I was working with to save that template, I can just click into, and I've got everything that I've worked with in this library in the past right here in my app. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started updating some of this stuff. And you can see at the top there that I've got the 
color palette that I've worked with this client with in the past, which makes it really easy to update and make everything consistent. Great, here's some, here's some copy that we're working with. And I'll be able to just select from my color theme, which I made on uh, the Adobe stock, or, sorry, the Adobe palette creator. And I can really quickly just make everything match. Awesome. And if I was working with the uh, free templates, they all use global color swatches, which is awesome, but I'm not. So what I'm going to do really quickly is click select, same, fill in color. Great. Great. Now that's my palette, my copy, everything I need to get started with Teresa to build out a whole campaign. And so we're going to go and click into the layers panel. And because Adobe stock templates are made by creative professionals, they're really well organized with uh, text separated from graphics and background. It's going to make it really easy to add an image. So to do that, I'm going to click that layer. I'm going to go back to my library. Let's see what else I've got in there. This is some stuff I've worked with in the past. I do really like it, but if I want to look for something new, I just click that little carrot, click Adobe stock. And right now in Illustrator, I'm searching Adobe stock, which is awesome. And so I can, scroll through here. I can add stuff from my library really easily. It'll update there. And if I'm looking for something else, I could also click this filter, which will show that we, we have photos, but we also have editable vectors available here. If we are in Adobe Dimension, we have 3D assets we can work with. And if we're looking for a specific license for a publication, you can find editorial photos there as well. So Nothing here really works for a background for me, which is fine. I'm going to go to the Adobe stock site. I do know that there's a ton more search features there. So I'm going to type in reading at home in the upper right hand search bar here. And when I hit enter there, that's going to take me to Adobe stock again, filtered by my query. So on the left hand panel here, you can see all of the different filters you have to work with here, whether it's asset type, license type, shape, depth of field. There's a ton of great stuff you can play with. And you can honestly filter by a ton of different types of content. So I'm filtering by featured because that tends to align with my aesthetic. And when I look through here, I'm looking for a background that'll work for this post, right? So this one's good. I'm going to add it to my library. Uh, this looks really cozy. Great. This guy's looking great. It's got coffee that works for my client. I'm gonna save this to my library also. And you can see here that you can find more from this series and more from this model based on those model releases that we require. But I'm also gonna show you this find similar feature, which will look at the image itself. And you can continue to dig in here. You can select the part of the image that you do like. And when I click into these search results, I should see images that are filtering by the part of the image that I selected. So great, this is this is really all gonna work for a background for me. This guy's drinking coffee, I'm gonna add him. I really like this couple here. They've got books that match my color palette. Awesome, so I have a bunch of stuff in my library I can work with now. I'm gonna go back into Illustrator. I'm gonna click out of this search from before and you can see here that this is all updated automatically. And I am gonna show you how you can preview this just by dragging and dropping into the template that you're working with. And you can see that it's using the preview, though it's got the watermark on it. And that'll just help me work with the um, image before I've finalized the design. So I can see that I, I like how that's looking. That's awesome. I'm going to click license, which I can also do right in app. It'll take from your Adobe stock credits. Awesome super easy and it will update to get rid of that watermark for me. And I'm going to reduce the transparency here. So that way it's really legible, really easy to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and send that to Teresa again on the other side of town. And I'm gonna do that by saving to my creative cloud on my desktop. When I save that, let's say virtual, I am going to then go to assets.adobe.com. Great. You can also do this in the, um, the Creative Cloud desktop app. And in these 
file in this side panel here, you'll see files, which are the working documents that I have. And I'll be able to send those to her by selecting, sharing, inviting. Great. She's got access. She can edit. I'm going to go ahead and share that library with her too. So she knows the color palette and all of the assets I was even thinking about working with. There we go. Awesome. She can edit. Let's jump into Teresa's screen and see where she's going to go with the motion design. Yeah, so Shay has sent me her assets via Creative Cloud uh, libraries and documents. And I went into my email, I've accepted that invite, and I'm able to open up my file explorer and access those Creative Cloud documents right here from my browser, which is super easy way to work. Um, all right, so it looks like we're still syncing, but that's okay. Just because we're on a time crunch, I'm gonna open up an older version uh, that we were working with. Okay. So it looks a little different from what Shay just did, but it's exactly the same kind of thing. Um, if the newer one that she uh, had sent comes through, we'll open that instead. But anyway, what I want to do is I want to create an animation kind of based off of this design that Shay sent me. However, I don't really have the time to head into After Effects to be creating that animation. So this is where Motion Graphics Templates comes in handy. I'm going to use the Motion Graphics Template that is uh, in Premiere to be able to send out some uh, social media um, animations for our different channels like Twitch or TikTok or whatever our client needs. So I'm gonna just look at the design I see we've got like these kind of blobs we've got like these really pretty fall colors and we've got like these really illustrative leaves so i'm going to head over to adobe stock so I can check out all of our uh, motion graphics templates and we do that by going to stock.adobe.com and go to templates and we'll go to search motion graphics. So maybe if you don't know what a motion graphics template is, it's it's a fairly new file. It's a template that is built in After Effects and it runs in Premiere Pro. And it's really great for people who don't know After Effects, they don't know how to animate, editors, um, people who have social media channels. You can have, we have thousands of these really well-built, uh, professionally made templates right on our site. So you can use the category filters on the side to kind of drill down exactly what you need. Maybe you need something for Premiere Rush. You can keep using those radials. However, this isn't how I like to work. I really like to work in app because I don't want to lose focus. I want to stay right in app and get everything done right there. So I'm going to create a new sequence. It's just an HD sequence with 24 frames per second. Um, that's the settings I like to use. Um, I'm going to just show you my workspace really quickly. We've got the program monitor, our timeline, we've got our toolbar and the essential graphics panel. And if you don't see that open, you can just come to window essential graphics and pop that open. When you open it up, you're going to see a bunch of preloaded templates in here. And a lot of these are really basic. And so they're usable for maybe something else. But for today, we're trying to go match that template that Shay sent me. I'm going to click on that Adobe stock, stock tab and be able to see a really beautiful, like uh, customized collection in here. It's like seasonal, aspirational, just like really cool things. Right now we've got all these super fun, like Halloween, like templates. And I love Halloween. So this really excites me. Um, and if you just click on the thumbnail and you just hover scrub, you're able to really easily just see what the animation is. Um, what also is really cool is that you can just click this free checkbox and again we've got hundreds of free motion graphics templates for both Premiere Pro and Premiere Rush right here available in the app. So these are also really great building blocks, you know, you can learn from these, um, you can reverse engineer them and just kind of make them your own and I, they're a really cool starter place. So today we're going to be looking for for that uh, matching one. So I'm going to type in fall and I'm getting these really literal kind of, you know, uh, templates that come up and like that would be great, but we're looking for something a little more abstract. And well, this is abstract, however, it's a transition. So I'm just going to keep heading and searching. Okay. So I think we might've found our winner. So in looking at this, I could see the animation and I think I want to go with this one. So I can 
license this right in app. There's a little shopping cart icon, icon. So right now it's a little download. It would look like this. You would just click that, it would license, and then you could just drag and drop it right to your timeline. And it's got to load. Okay, we're gonna give that a quick playthrough. So we kind of have this like paper cut, uh, stop motion, like uh, low motion kind of look. I think it's really charming. And I think it really is evocative of that client, the Cozy Calico Cafe that we're working with. So I'm gonna stop my CTI right in the center where everything is the largest um, and get to work. When I click on that clip in the timeline, I now get this control panel over in the essential graphics panel. I moved from browse over to edit right for me. And like I said, this is the control panel. I'm gonna be able to check out all of the cool things that are packed in here by the artist who made this. This one specifically has three separate um, HD versions. And then this artist also put in these kind of vertical versions that I think would work really well for you know platforms like TikTok or Instagram stories. But I'm gonna go with this first template because I think it matches Shay's template really well. Um, all of our templates on Adobe Stock have these kind of global controls and they're pretty useful for being able to change that stuff without down resing um, the graphics. So I don't need those for today. I'm gonna close that group up. I'm gonna open up my text controls and I'm gonna just swing open each one of my different text controls. What I'm gonna do now might look a little crazy. I'm going to side by side uh, Illustrator and uh, Premiere Pro. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to check out what fonts Shay is using. I want to look at the copy. I also can grab the color straight from it. So I would, if I was doing this by myself, I would have Illustrator on my second monitor and be able to work monitor to monitor, but I need you guys to see everything that's going on. So I'm just going to click into my text fields and just quickly change this out so it uh, matches everything it says on Shay's template. Okay, so now we can check out Illustrator and see what fonts are going on here. So Shay's use us here bat, and this is a font from Adobe Fonts. And now that I, because I've opened this uh, Illustrator template in uh, Illustrator and Shay has used all of these Adobe fonts. It's already synced to my creative cloud. So it means all of these fonts are ready for me over here in Premiere. So that means I don't have to deal with any messy licensing or um, did Shay send me the fonts? You know, don't have to do any of that. It's it's ready for me. Okay, in book club is Asir Bat outline. And that is this really lovely chocolate brown. And that one's much, much larger. So I'm just gonna pop that up. And last one is from home and that is beloved script. So I'm just gonna change that out. Okay. And change out that color to that really pretty plum. And now that we've changed the fonts, we're getting, uh, you know, things crashing into each other because ascenders will do that on your cursives. So this uh, artist put in these positioning controls. So I'm going to move the Y value, the up and down of from home and also cozy calicos to kind of give it a bit more breathing room. I'm gonna just play with my font hierarchy just a little here, just so I'm a little happier with it. And I think we're pretty good to go there. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna close that group up because I don't need to touch it anymore. I'm gonna open up my style controls so it looks like all of these are the background colors. And so like you got this blue that corresponds to this blue blob and like this rust, which corresponds to here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to quickly drag and drop all of those colors that I want to change it out to uh, from Premiere, you know, from Illustrator in Premiere. And that's pretty quick. Alternatively, I could also open up my libraries cause Shay has already sent them to me. And I could check out the swatches that she sent to me. They're right here, but I just want to see where things are on screen and kind of mimic it. So that's another way you can work with libraries in Premiere Pro. All right, so I don't need Illustrator anymore. I'm just going to make that nice and large, and I'm going to give that a playthrough. All right, that's super cool. We've been able to put together an animation super, super fast, and I'm really happy with it. 
but also the power in a motion graphics template is the fact that this one came with a whole bunch of different styles. So I only had to do the text, the fonts, and the colors once, and I'm able to access six different styles, which means I can get six times the work done even faster. So I think I'm definitely gonna go with one for the HD, but I definitely think I wanna go with four for a vertical sequence. So I'm gonna show you how we can do that. I'm gonna copy my clip from the timeline, it uh, uh, control C or command C, and then I'm gonna open up a new sequence with a controller command N and go into my settings. I'm going to use a, um, a 619 uh, ratio, and that is a 576 by 1024. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna paste my motor clip into that timeline and check it out. And right now it's kind of cutting off. And the reason it's doing that is because we're still on style one. So I'm just gonna pull that to style four. I can readdress the fonts uh, sizes so they stay within the screen a little bit better. And then play with where the positioning is. And there, now I have a vertical for my Instagram stories or for TikTok or anything else that uses vertical for my social media channels. I've got to be able to send both of these out to Media Encoder and quickly have like so many titles. And that really took us like, what, 10 minutes? Like this is the easiest workflow to use by using templates. It's, it's super amazing. Yeah, we basically started with the identity design and now we have a whole campaign. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like using templates really can speed up your workflow and using them together uh, along with so many other the assets on Adobe stock can like get you from, you know, where you were to where you want to go. Um, so I guess we have a few minutes, you know, do we want to see if there's any questions in the chat that might need? I did see a good question about um, how licensing works. Okay. So the question was that if you are, if you have a Creative Cloud uh, membership and then you go into a, a Adobe stock, you have to pay for the assets. And that's because your Creative Cloud subscription is covering the software license, but we want to make sure that artists get paid. So you have to, you do have to pay for individual assets with the exception of the free collection, which launched this week. So make sure you check those out. And we are just really dedicated to making sure that everyone gets paid fairly for their work. So. If you're confused as to why you have to pay for stuff on Adobe stock, that's why the Mogerts are a great price. I saw in the chat that very often those same kinds of like workflows would go from like 20 to $50. So, you know, it's a great way to learn. Yeah. So is there any, all right, let's see. Um, so I see, Terius, you uh, mentioned about the 1080 by 1920 uh, as a 916 re resolution. The reason we wanted to do that for this uh, Mogert specifically is because um, we are kind of held to that 1920-1080 for Mogerts. So we're stuck with the actual size that it is. So we kind of have to um, work within those parameters and then you know, not, that is another 916 kind of resolution size. It's a little unorthodox, but that's how you can do it without uh, down resing your content by using the effects controls. All right. Great. Um, cool. So, <laughs> cool. Uh, all right, cool. Thanks everyone. So yeah, this has been really great. Um, I broke that thing, but that's totally okay. We're leaving, but um, thank you so much for joining. I'm Teresa. You can find me all over the internet at Rockabirdy. And I'm Shay. You can follow me at Paper Miss Shay. It's been great talking to you guys.
Thank you.